Welcome, welcome to To The Point. Uh, I have a series of four very interesting uh, subjects to discuss with Derek Walker, the pastor of Oxford Bible Church. And today we're going to be talking about the imminent invasion of Israel. So let me introduce you straight away to Pastor Derek Walker. Derek, welcome to the show. Thank you, Richard. It's and good got, to be here. And we've got four shows to do on end times. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and I especially want you to do them because uh, we all appreciate that you have a lot, of, a lot of knowledge on this particular subject. Uh, so, uh, Derek, move straight into it. Uh, what do you think could be the next major prophetic event to be fulfilled? Well, Richard, thank you. I, I'm sure uh, that one of the events, if not the next one, one of the ones that is going to happen very soon is what I call the imminent invasion of Israel. I think everything is ready for this to happen. And uh, it's a prophecy that's in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that describes when Israel has been gathered back from the nations, which is really Ezekiel 36, then a dramatic divine intervention is going to happen because there's going to be an invasion from the north. And we're going to have a picture up uh, in a few seconds that will show that it says from the far north, and it's from Russia really, and there'll be a coalition of nations with them like uh, involving Turkey, involving Iran, involving uh, Sudan, Ethiopia. And all these nations will converge on Israel like a cloud and cover Israel, and it will seem like all is lost. Mm. Uh, it will be a surprise attack. But, and then God was going to step in mm. because he says, these are my people, this is my land, and God will bring those uh, invading nations into judgment. And it will be one of the greatest divine interventions of all history. Mm. And God will save uh, Israel. And it will be a catalyst for a great revival. Mm. And, and so this, um, this event is, could happen because I believe all the politics involved, all the nations that are uh, listed as being the attackers, and all those who, who speak against the attack, you know, line up very well with present con conditions. So I believe it's going to happen soon. And that's why I've written a book on the subject, mm. and I called it The Imminent Invasion. If I, if I can yes, maybe absolutely. show it, The Imminent Invasion of Israel go, obviously goes into more detail of what we can talk about today. But I believe that Christians need to be ready for this. Mm. Excellent. Well, I've read that book. It's absolutely excellent. So let's t talk about that word imminent. <laughs> um, Talk about imminent. It well, the word imminent is an interesting one. It, it's almost like something that could fall on you at any moment. Right. Something that could happen suddenly, um, you know, without warning. Uh, in other words, there's no reason to think that it's going to happen in five years, ten years' time. It, it could happen at any time. That's what the word imminent means. And when I felt this was imminent, in other words, all the ducks are lining up, yeah. uh, then then I, th that's why I said it's imminent. It's not just soon, but it could happen at any time. Right. The, the reason why I thought it was imminent, well, we know for Iran is aligned against Israel. We know that Russia, you know, given the right reasons also, and Turkey was the key thing, because for a long time Turkey was an ally with the West. Right. But recently Turkey has turned against Israel. Right. So all the nations listed as being the attackers of Israel um, mostly they're, they're Muslim nations and mostly they're nations that uh, we could say yes we could see that happening today hmm. um, and the other reason that it's imminent uh, in fact if we show an, another picture right now we'll see how these invading nations again um, correspond hmm. to political entities today that, that have reasons to attack uh, Israel hmm. excellent so um, let's move on then. Um, so this imminent business, mm. um, that means the invasion of Israel could happen like soon, like in our lifetime. Exactly. Could, could, and could happen, you know, next year. Uh, right. Who knows? And, uh, right. you know, another big reason why it's become imminent is, is because of the recent oil and gas discoveries in Israel. Right. In fact, um, if we show our next picture now, yeah. uh, you've, I'm sure you've heard of it in the news, you know, massive oil and, and gas discoveries in the Mediterranean just off Israel's coast. Right. And um, 
The reason why it fits with the prophecy is that it says that God puts a hook in the jaw of this, uh, these invading nations, and in particular the, in, the, um, the nation called Rosh, or right. Russia, in the far right. north, right. and the hook is that they come for spoil. Now you might think, what does Israel have in terms of spoil? Yeah. And, um, but now uh, Israel has, has come into a game-changing amount of, of energy supply. Right. And Russia's whole economy depends on her, her control of a, of a large energy supply. Yeah, sure. And therefore she has very, a lot of reasons to, for spoil to, te to take Israel and control that en energy supply for her own economy's sake. And that's just happened. And it's interesting, it's a fulfillment of prophecy, because if we look on our next picture, there's an amazing prophecy in Deuteronomy 33:24 that indicates that Israel does have oil hidden away. Right. It says, when it does the tribal boundaries, the tribal prophecy in Deuteronomy 33, it says, of Asher, he said, Asher is the most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. Hmm. And actually, in the 70s, I think, they looked for oil in Asher. Now, if you look in the picture, um, the tribe of Asher there in, in yellow is shaped like a foot. Yeah. And its toe is sticking into the Mediterranean, oh. kind of around Mount Carmel wow. area. <laughs> and so right. it doesn't say that there's oil on the land of Asher, but he dips his foot in oil. In mm. other words, the oil's in the Mediterranean. Right. just off the coast of Asher, and that's exactly where they discovered these, these oil fields. Isn't that amazing? And now, you see, given the right political excuses, Russia would have a lot to gain by taking control of those oil reserves. And of course, the mm. Allied nations, which are mostly uh, Islamic, also would have their own reasons, mm. uh, according to their beliefs, that, they should, that Israel should be finished. <laughs> so if you've just joined us, we're talking about an imminent invasion of Israel. Derek Walker's talking about it. And uh, imminent means it could happen very soon, even in our lifetime. So do pay attention. I'm paying close attention because this is something, this is a game-changing event which could happen in our lifetime. Can you imagine what it would be like when, if Israel was invaded by all these surrounding uh, countries? Let's move on. Now, just to add to the whole idea of imminence, mm. I, wanted to, I think you want to say something about the, the blood moons. Well, yes, it's interesting to me that, uh, and again, we'll, we'll see these in a picture, um, that something dramatic is going to happen next year and the year after. There are some blood-red moons coming up on the Jewish holy days, you know, to, at Passover and then at Tabernacles in 2014, and then again the following year at Passover and Tabernacles, we have these four blood-red moons, which is yeah. an unusual event. And interestingly, whenever this kind of alignment has happened before, because the moon represents Israel, sure. and so the blood-red moon sig signifies some, some important event connected to Israel. And whenever it's happened before, around the time of 1948, around the time of 1967, these events happen, and of course, in both occasions, Israel was under threat, under attack, mm. but God came through and delivered her. Sure. And also it happened in 1492, mm. which was the time of the Spanish Inquisition and the time when Columbus discovered America. And both of those events affected the Jews particularly, mm. and they also um, brought about a great deliverance in the end, because America mm. would prove very important for the Jewish history. So it seems like whenever there are four blood red moons, hmm. it signifies something very important for Israel, but also that God is going to do something dramatic. Right. And that's coming up next year. So that so, could be, a, I think, you know, uh, that it's not talking about the rapture or anything like that, but I think it's talking about an attack on Israel. Hmm. And, and so it could be next year, who so, knows? So that is uh, going to be happening 2014 15, is that right? Exactly. I think you've got a picture to share us, is that right? Of the of the moons, they've yeah. probably been uh, showing that picture okay. already. Oh, but okay. please show the picture of the moons if you haven't already. <laughs> right. um, and so I believe that it, it truly is imminent. Good. So let's talk about the invasion. Um, do we need to talk about the invasion now, or should we wait until it happens? Well, I, I think we need to talk about it now, and that's why I wrote my book because we need to be ready. Right. 
The reason is that the prophecy says that God will intervene and God will glorify his name. If I could read um, a scripture in Ezekiel 38, uh, after God has intervened, he says this in verse 23, Thus I will magnify myself and I will sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they, the nations, will know that I am the Lord. And in chapter 39, verse 7, he says, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nations will know that I'm the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. And so what he's saying is that God will demonstrate through this divine intervention that the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, is still alive and very well, and many in the nations, there will be a revival in the nations, because God will declare, it will be such a supernatural thing, that many in Israel will turn back to God, many in the nations will turn back to God, and they will realize that the God of the Bible is alive and well, and therefore we will have a window of opportunity mm. to share the gospel, and not the, and there will be a great opportunity for revival mm. because people will be open because what was prophesied yeah. will come to pass. So we, we do need to be so ready. So fulfill prof prophecy actually, you know, on television screens. It'll right be one of the most stunning fulfillments of prophecy. Amazing. Yeah. So who actually are the invad invaders actually? Well, if we, if we go now um, and we'll, again, we're gonna, if we see the next picture, uh, and if we go to Ezekiel 38, it tells us in the first few verses, it says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, is the name of the, of the leader. Gog is the leader of this invading army. Of the land of Magog. And the land of Magog is now the, with the Scythian Empire, uh, was, the, was kind of the southern Russia and the the satellite USSR states, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and even including parts of Turkey. Uh, then it says the Prince of Rosh, Russia, Mishesh and Tubal, and again it could Russia, Turkey area, mm -hmm. and prophesy against him and says, Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the Prince of Rosh, Mishesh and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army. It says, verse 5, Persia, that's Iran, mm -hmm. Uh, Ethiopia, which could also be Sudan, mm -hmm. Libya, are with them, all with shield and home, helmet. Gomer, it talks about, Togomar, uh, th that's areas of Turkey. From the far north, it says, that proves mm. it, we're talking about Russia, mm. the far north of, of um, Israel is Russia, mm. uh, and it says many people with you. So there's this invading force, and mm. the key ones are Russia, and its satellite state, the former Soviet Union sure. states, right. Iran, of course, and Turkey is, is heavily emphasized, and, and others too. So that, those will be the primary invaders. Right. If we could show the second picture as well, gives you another viewpoint of these invaders. Uh, it's a complicated study to mm. deduce all of these, but I've, the, all the information's in the book. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I am right, is that uh, Moscow is actually due north of Jerusalem. Exactly due north. You're exactly right. due north, You're isn't right. it? Yes. I mean, you look on the map, it's just right due north, right isn't it? Right due north. So there we are. So, Derek, uh, where actually do these countries invade? Well, it's, again, if we're in the prophecy in Ezekiel 38, verse 7 to 9 tells us. He says, he t he, God is speaking to Gog, <laughs> and he says, you know, um, in the last days, verse 8, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, hmm. which had long been desolate, that were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell securely. So in other words, it's Israel, the land of Israel, but it's Israel having been regathered from the nations. Hmm. So it's after 1948. They've been scattered to the nations. They've been regathered again. And in that time frame, this army now attacks. Excellent. So that fits the present situation. And it says, you'll come like a storm and you'll cover the land like a cloud. It will seem like all is lost for Israel. And moving on, so we got that part of it, um, where they invade. But so why do they invade? And we mentioned this already. And then have. That what it says in the next verse, it says, it will come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind speaking of the invader, yeah. and you'll make an evil plan. I'll go up against the land of unwalled villages, 
to a peaceful people, because Israel does not want war, it wants no. peace, no. Um, who dwell safely or securely, which we know is true. You know, the Israeli have a very, one of the best militaries in the world. Um, and it says, to take plunder and to take booty, verse 12. Um, to stretch your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited, against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land, in the midst of the earth. So they've come for spoil. They've come for wealth. Mm. Um, now, they will pretend that they're coming probably mm. to, as liberators, yeah. you know, um, as yeah. a coalition force to liberate <laughs> right. maybe the Palestinian people or whatever, but their real reason sure. is for spoil. And then the objections come from Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish mm. in verse 13. Now, Sheba and Dedan is Saudi Arabia, who are presently allied with the West. Yes. Tarshish is the Western powers. Right. Could Spain, Britain, America, could be the they were, Tarshish was the Western powers. So mm. here again, the political alignment is that the West will object, and they will say, "Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to take silver and gold, livestock and goods to take great plunder?" In other words, the objection comes: your real reason is not noble. You've mm. come to take control of the of the wealth the oil and the gas. But that's all they do is object. Right, so now comes the exciting part. What's going to happen, Derek, when they actually invade? <laughs> <laughs> well, it will seem like Israel's overwhelmed. But God is going to step in. And in fact, uh, if you look in uh, verse uh, uh, 14, God says, uh, on that day when my people, notice he still calls them my people, Israel. Mm. God's going to fight for Israel. Will you not know it? He says, then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you. It says, you'll come against my people Israel like a cloud. I will bring you against my land. God says, it's my land you're attacking. And then it says, uh, God will get angry. <laughs> Verse 18, no. my fury will show in my face. And he talks about the fire of his wrath. And then there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Hmm. And uh, it says it will be a massive earthquake. Uh, sh and the, all the mountains, you know, everything will fall to the ground in this earthquake. Mm. And God is essentially going to totally devastate this mm. attacking army. And it says there will be a sword against Gog throughout my uh, mountains. Every man's sword will be against his brother. So they'll start fighting and killing each other in the panic. Um, then he talks about pestilence. There'll be diseases will break out in that army. There'll be bloodshed. I'll rain down on him flooding rain, hailstones, fire and brimstone. <laughs> so God's going to open up all his arsenal essentially. And this massive earthquake and everything else that happens with it is going to devastate this invading army. Mm. And it will be so obvious that yeah. God, it will, it's God who saves Israel. So this is going to be some totally supernatural, supernatural deliverance of Israel. Absolutely. And of course that's going to open up a wonderful opportunity for mm. us to actually talk about fulfilled prophecy and preach the gospel. Exactly. And so we need to know Ezekiel 38 and 39 so that we are ready to witness because it, when it hits the news, you know, this will be the greatest opportunity we have to say, look, the Bible predicted this all the time. Sure. It will be our gr a great chance for for a revival. So Praise can I God. just ask you, Derek, um, we're all aware of Antichrist lurking, <laughs> <laughs> waiting to come to the center of the world stage. Is this possibly part of that? It, it could well be, because um, that's a good point, actually, because when this judgment hits, it's going to shift the whole power balance. Uh, hmm. This could be a, a, a judgment that brings down many nations and many powers. It may bring down um, a certain form of Islam. Um, it will humble uh, certain nations. And this could create, as it were, a power vacuum mm. for the Antichrist to arise. Sure. So uh, I think, yes, as you said, it, it will be a game changer. It will be a game The political changer. situation yeah. will shift and it may well be the, the thing into the final arising of, of Antichrist. Antichrist. That's right. So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you're very interested in what Derek's got to say. I'm very interested myself. If you've got any questions, do, um, this is actually a pre-recorded show, but do send emails to info at revelationtv.com. 
and I will forward them to Derek, and he'll answer them, I'm sure, for you. Um, he has written a book about this, and he'll tell you about that later. Um, now, I'm very aware, of course, of uh, the different times of the tribulation, pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib, and all the rest of it, and Armageddon. Where do you think this fits in with the pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib Exactly, yes, situation. because people come up with, you know, it's going to happen at the yeah. end of the tribulation. Um, different possibilities are it's happened already in history, but that's clearly not true. No. You know, it clearly hasn't. Um, some relate Gog and Magog, and they connect it to the Gog and Magog in Revelation 20, that it will happen after the thousand years. No. But again, although there's that matching of the names, everything else doesn't match. Right. The thing that I always turn to is um, the fact that there's going to be a seven-year clear-up operation. Right. Um, at, at, after this God intervenes, there's going to be a seven-year clear-up operation, and, and that's in Ezekiel 30, uh, 39. And it says uh, in 39 verse 9, Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons all the weapons and so on, and they'll make fires with them for seven years. Yeah. So part of the cleaning up operation afterwards mm. will be a seven year period. Now, it can't be at the end of the thousand years because we're immediately into the eternal state. <laughs> there mm. isn't seven years to burn weapons. That, that would be silly. Um, neither could it be the Battle of Armageddon. Because no. if it was a Battle of Armageddon, what are they doing burning weapons for seven years into the thousand years of Christ? Yes, Christ. Neither could it be in the middle of the tribulation, because again, there's only three and a half years. Left, yeah. no, there isn't seven years. Sure. Uh, and when the Lord returns, he'll renew the whole earth anyway. So it's either going to be right at the start of the tribulation, which just about gives you seven years for this, but more likely it's going to be a few years before the tribulation. Yes. Because I don't see, because in the second half of the tribulation, it's so terrible, the great tribulation, yeah, sure. and Israel, yeah. many of Israel will have fled the land anyway. They're, yeah. they're not going to be doing this clearing up operation. Yeah. Um, so I think it's probably going to be a few years before the tribulation. In other words, in, the, in our time, in the church age. I'm just going to give you a moment, because um, I'm sure lots of people are very interested to know more about this. Uh, I believe you've got a book and a DVD you can tell us about. Yes, and in fact, um, if we show um, the next picture, it will show, show the book. Right. Um, uh, and I've also done a one-hour documentary DVD on this right. that's available right. if people contact um, the church, uh, yeah. 01865 515086. So there's the book. Um, yeah. And of right. course, the, uh, also the, um, the DVD, sure. if you want to study it in more detail. Because I do believe we need to be ready for this. Well, so do I. I mean, I've read the book and seen the DVD. I think they're both excellent. They're, different. they're slightly different. I'm, I don't yes. know which I prefer, but I, I really like both of them. And uh, I really think they're fantastic, actually. And we really need to get familiar with all this. I don't think a lot of people are. I mm. wasn't familiar with all this until you brought it to my attention. I think people need to be familiar with, familiar with all this and watch the events as they unfold in the Middle East mm. um, because this could you know, well be drawing up to you know, the big end time scenario. Yes. So just to conclude, can you give us a sort of uh, scenario of how things might turn out? Well, let's take one, one possible thing. It could happen in a different way, of course. But we know the Iran situation and the nuclear threat from Iran. We know that yeah. Israel is not going to let Iran have a nuclear bomb. I don't think they will. And so we could see Israel doing a strike right. on Iran right. um, and taking, tr taking out the nuclear facilities. Now, if that happens, that could be the catalyst for Russia to say, and, and ha with the support of all the nations with her, many Islamic mm. nations, say, we, we, enough is enough. We've got to take out, take out Israel. Mm. And that could be the, mm. what will happen. Sure. And then when the big earthquake covers the land, we know that when Antichrist comes in, there will be a, a rebuilt Jewish temple. Right. So the Dome of the Rock has got to fall down at some point. Wow. <laughs> maybe that earthquake is what takes it out. Yeah. And maybe the breaking of the Islamic powers there and, and of Russia, which are sure. supported by Russia militarily, then uh, will allow mm. 
a compromise to be made on the Temple Mount that, that couldn't be made right now. Sure. You know, Israel couldn't have a temple now without starting a, a world war. But so it will shift the situation like that. So that's how I see it could, could play out. Well, this has been absolutely fascinating to have Derek with us. And he's been talking about the imminent invasion of Israel. Now, um, you can get onto Derek's website, um, Oxford Bible Church. Uh, you can phone him. You can actually, I'm going to make sure that this particular um, program goes on my own website, freechristianteaching.org, um, and you'll be able to watch this, this program again. Thanks for joining us, and join us again soon for another program with Derek. God bless you.